You probably never noticed, but I never say this word. Welcome to The Rob Led Show. I'm your host, Rob Led. Why you never hear me call them that's the focus of today's podcast. First of all, welcome back. You may have noticed we've had a flurry of videos somewhere around late October to November time frame, and then things slow down a little bit. You may recall that I travel extensively and I work in a real estate related field, so I had to rearrange some things so I can prepare for my goals in 2023. The great news is I'm assembling a team right now that's gonna help us put out shows much more frequently in the future. We're also coming up on that magic number of 1,000 subscribers, so we'll be looking for sponsors pretty soon since we expect that 4,000 watch hours will follow sometime thereafter. Now, I know most of that stuff doesn't mean anything to you, but other YouTubers know just how important that is. We've got a lot to unpack here today. This is a show I've been wanting to make for a long time, and it's a topic that we actually take for granted. It seems minor, but it's really important. Don't let our agenda today fool you. There's a reason I'm covering topics that you'd think everyone would know. What is a Democrat? We'll cover what is a conservative. We're going to talk about the English language. What is a classical liberal? What is a modern liberal? Then we're going to talk about what happened, that time Coca-Cola messed up, and then finally, now you know. But before we get started, I'd like you to go ahead and do a few things. First of all, like this video, subscribe to it. If you're on YouTube to the upper right hand corner, you'll see a bell. That's a notifications bell. Click it and it'll notify you the next time we release a new show. If you're on Rumble though, to the upper right hand corner, you'll see a share button. Click it and it'll share this video with a friend of yours who should have been here with us today. Go ahead and do all of those things that apply right now. I wanted to discuss something you may not have noticed about me. You can go through all my videos, you can go through all my posts, you can even track down some old interviews of mine, and do you know the one word you'll never hear me use? Liberal. At least not when I'm referencing the Democrat Party or their supporters. Do I refer to them as Democrats? Yes. Leftists? Yes. Socialists? Yes. Perhaps even communists, but never will you find anywhere where I've referred to them as liberals. And today, we're going to discuss why. Part of the reason I think my channel has grown pretty quickly is because I try not to assume people know certain things. The nature of people is to stay quiet, even if you're referencing something that they don't understand. So sometimes I cover something that may seem trivial, and the reason why is because I know that somewhere out there there's someone who didn't know this, they're just scared to raise their hand. I keep things at a high level because most people bore quite easily, and as a speaker, one of the things that I've learned is that it's important to keep your audience engaged. A Democrat is a person who believes in the principles of the Democrat Party, and the principles of the party all have to do with state control and the belief that the state should be in charge of most everything. Ironically, when I grew up in New York, there was a public school called Andrew Jackson High School. When you hear phrases like public school, public library, it denotes that this facility is government controlled, controlled by the state. The word free is often used synonymously to mean it's run by government. Even though it's not free, you and I pay for it. Advocates of so-called free health care, college, welfare, public housing, social security are typically classified as Democrats. I've always loved the late Herman Cain's summary of what Democrats believe in. More government, less personal responsibility. In America, we call this mindset one of the left. A conservative is someone who supports the principles of the American Revolution. The principles of the American Revolution are words we're all familiar with, but rarely take the time to explore personally. In fact, some of us barely remember them at all. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the, you know the thing. Which is why they should be conserved lest we forget the principles that made our country great. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Conservatives hold the belief that we are born free, and government exists not to grant us rights, but only to secure the rights we have naturally. Since this is the only role of government, it's the conservative view that the government's role should be minimal in our lives. The words private, personal, or individual are synonymous with meaning that something is being controlled by an individual and not by government, or at least not by the public. Advocates of private property rights, the right to defend oneself, and individual freedom are typically classified as Republicans. Conservatives are the antithesis of what Democrats believe in. We believe in more personal responsibility and less government. In America, we call this mindset one of the right. If you're familiar with the English language, then you're familiar with something called prefixes. A prefix is 
Noun. This can be a word, letter, or number placed before another. Verb. Or you can add something at the beginning as a prefix or introduction. If you're unsure of how a prefix is used, for example, un or multi, which is added to the beginning of a word in order to form a different word. For example, the prefix un is added to happy to form unhappy. The word liber is an interesting word. It comes from the Latin, meaning free or independent. So based on what we've learned about prefixes, liber can be considered a prefix because it's added to the front of certain words like liberty or libertarian, which makes perfect sense because earlier we learned that conservatives believe we are born free and we believe in life and liberty, all consistent with the root of the word meaning free or freedom. People have tried to argue with me over this chart, but this chart is consistent in another way. There's libertarians over to the right. Libertarians believe in even less government than Republicans. In other words, they believe in more freedom. But now we have a problem. We have a problem because there's a large segment of America who seem to want to call these people on the left liberals. If the prefix liber means freedom and independence, we all know there's only one party that cares about the Declaration of Independence and it's conservatives on the right. We believe in freedom so much it's pretty common practice for conservatives to carry a copy of the Constitution with us. While Democrats, on the other hand, you know, the, you know the thing. Exactly. The first time I ever heard someone hint that Republicans are the real liberals is when I first started listening to award-winning economist Milton Friedman. And the liberal view that the justification for government action is to prevent coercion and to promote voluntary cooperation among responsible individuals leads to a very short list of basic functions which government should undertake. They are, first of all, to prevent one man from coercing another, the internal police function. They are, second, providing for external defense. These two are really part of the same, to prevent coercion, to prevent coercion from within, to prevent coercion from without. He was absolutely right. As you heard Milton say, by the classical liberal definition of government, government would be extremely small. You hear that list he rattled off? Essentially, in our view, the government's role should be so small we could count them on one hand. The military, the police, the court system. Look at that. I still got fingers left. But most Democrats can tell you that much of what government does today was first implemented by Democrat FDR in the 1930s. We're a far cry from that short list of responsibilities. Today, government tells an employer whether the wage they pay an employee is fair. Through Social Security, they deduct money from your paycheck as a set aside for your retirement. Government controls your health care, your child's education through public school. They deliver your mail. Look at that. I'm already out of fingers, and you and I both know I'm nowhere near all of the things we've allowed government to control in our lives. It should be embarrassing that people actually believe Democrats are advocates for freedom. Democrats are the party of socialism, and even Maxine Waters knows what socialism means. And guess what this liberal would be all about? This liberal will be all about socializing, uh, um, would be about um, basically taking over and the government running all of your company. Now in the past, I've criticized her for ducking the word socialize, but in this case, I'm glad she actually simplified what socialism is. She's basically saying Democrats are about the business of taking over someone else's company. Does that sound like freedom to you? No, it's not. And in case you think this one example is just an isolated incident, let's not forget that time Mark Zuckerberg admitted that the FBI paid him a visit to discuss which posts can see the light of day. Um, I mean, basically, the background here is the FBI, I think, basically came to us, uh, some, some folks on our team, and was like, hey, um, just so you know, like, you should be on high alert. There was, the, we, we thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of, of um, uh, uh, that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. Let's not forget Elon's expose of what really went on behind closed doors at Twitter. 
Listen to this. The ninth installment of the Twitter files have been released. This time, dealing how, deal, detailing how several government agencies interacted with the platform. Matt Taibbi saying, quote, the files show the FBI acting as doormen to a vast program of social media surveillance and censorship, encompassing agencies across the federal government from the State Department to the Pentagon to the CIA. Well, what about one of the things you're personally aware of? During the pandemic, the government told you when you need to have your butt back inside the house, a curfew. The government told you which businesses were important and which ones weren't. Some of you lost your jobs because the government told even private businesses to inquire about your personal medical records. As you already know, conservatives fought tooth and nail to prevent that from happening. Minimizing government interference in order to keep you free is what classical liberalism is. And that title belongs to conservative Republicans. Democrats aren't classical liberals. In fact, they're not liberal at all. But since most of America is confused, I will refer to them as the title that some people refer to them as which is the title of modern liberals, which is still BS because all modern liberalism means is taking over and the government running all of your company. So what happened? How did we go from the days when we clearly understood that liberalism stands for freedom to not knowing what the hell we're even talking about? Well, I already kind of gave you a hint. I said most of the government expanding policies that we still have on the books to this day can be blamed on FDR. That's why you still hear Democrats to this day reference the New Deal, which was a description of FDR's policies. FDR has always been a hero to the left. Democrats used to refer to themselves as progressives, in case you thought that term was a new term. It isn't. It just resurfaced. For 40 years, Democrats had almost nothing good to say about liberalism. So for them to call themselves liberal today, is almost laughable. A lot of things happened behind the scenes that contributed to FDR co-opting the word liberal to define his policies. But one of the simplest explanations you'll be able to relate to and remember is prohibition. If you remember stories of mobsters like Al Capone, then you'll probably also remember that one of the rackets of Al Capone was the selling of illegal alcohol. That's right. As much as we drink today, it's kind of hard to imagine that there used to be an 18th Amendment to the Constitution that banned the production, the importation, the transportation, and the sale of alcohol. It was known as the Prohibition Area because alcohol was prohibited. The amendment was widely unpopular, which is one of the reasons why mobsters made so much money, because people were going to drink regardless. But the important thing to note is that the public by and large blamed Democrats for this government interference. During FDR's first term, the effort to repeal prohibition was starting to pick up steam. Wanting to be a more popular president, FDR shied away from the progressive label, even though he was one, and started using the word liberal to define his policies. The liberal phrase began to stick and prohibition was repealed with the passing of the 21st Amendment in 1933. So Democrats then, just like today, hijacked a movement in order to get votes. To this day, Democrats and many Americans still refer to Democrats as liberals, even though there are a few of us who know that that title is incorrect. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive, but I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. I've told some of my close friends that I never refer to Democrats as liberals, and to be honest, nobody thinks it's that big of a deal. I guess the only people who think branding is important are businesses, me, and Denzel Washington. Blue Magic, that's a brand name. Like Pepsi, that's a brand name. I stand behind it, I guarantee it. They know that even if they don't know me any more than they know the, the, the chairman of General Mills. I guess it's all a matter of perspective. It takes a long time to build a reputation to build a brand. Coca-Cola once found this out the hard way. For over a century, Coca-Cola had earned the trust of the world. They tweaked their formula and spent untold amounts of money in marketing to the point that Coca-Cola was just as American as baseball. Then something happened. On April 23rd, 1985, some ad genius came up with the idea and said, hey, you know what we could do? We could change the formula. 
Keep in mind, Coca-Cola has been around since 1886. I don't know what made them change the formula, but it was the first formula change that they've had in 99 years. You can already guess what happened. Turmoil. People protested everywhere. It's one of the most famous ad blunders in history. Then on July 11th, 1985, just 79 days later, Coca-Cola had given up. They released Coca-Cola Classic to ease the public's fears that they hadn't abandoned their winning formula. No sense in destroying a 100 plus year old brand just because someone decided to test something. Imagine that. So now you know why you never hear me call them because they're just not. It goes against the English language even. If you don't believe Democrats hijack movements, take a look at what happened to the women's movement. When Democrats felt they needed the women's vote, they pushed the feminist movement. But now that they feel that they can count on the women's vote no matter what, they've pushed women to the side in favor of the trans and plus community vote. The same way the word liberal has changed, biological women have now been demoted to being called cis women. If you don't believe me, Google the Cambridge Dictionary's definition of what a woman is right now. Woman, noun, an adult who lives and identifies as female, though they may have been said to have a different sex at birth. Despite what I know, I never push the issue, even with my conservative friends, because after all, I'm an individualist. I believe in letting you be you. It's kind of like when people call me an African-American. Technically, Elon Musk is more African-American than I am, but I know what you mean. Well, we'll never get it all, but we sure unpacked a lot. In this episode, we covered what is a Democrat. We said a Democrat is a person who supports the Democrat Party's principles of more government, less personal responsibility. We said a Republican is a person who supports the Republican Party's principles of less government and more personal responsibility. If you noticed that I changed what is a Republican to what is a conservative, good. I did that on purpose. Many conservatives are full aware that the Republican Party has not been living up to their original principles. That's why I opted to define what a conservative is and not a Republican, because there is a difference. The English language. We covered the reason I don't refer to Democrats as liberals, because by the definition of the word, they're just not. The word liberal at its root means freedom and independence. That's not what defines Democrat policies at all. Democrats are for big government, which is the limitation of freedom. What is a classical liberal? The word classic is typically used when somehow people have gotten away from the original design or intent of a thing. Classic is meant to say this is the original, not a remake. We discussed how conservative Republicans are the true liberals. Since the word liberal has been hijacked by Democrats, however, we just go by the term conservatives today. What is a modern liberal? If the word classic typically represents the original, then the word modern represents something that has had some changes made to it for some reason. The Democrats' version of liberalism is a marked change from what liberalism is supposed to be. For instance, just recently, Democrat California Governor Gavin Newsom threatened to ban all gasoline vehicles in California by the year 2035. He had to back off of the idea, but he didn't back off of the idea because he was listening to you as a citizen. He had to back off of the idea because he found out that his climate agenda had some flaws in it preventing him from being a dictator. So he is not a liberal in the true sense of the word, which is freedom. A true liberal would let you decide whether or not you wanted an electric vehicle, not force you to buy one on their terms. We discuss how the word liberal got corrupted. It got corrupted when FDR decided to use the word liberal for political expediency during the repeal of prohibition. The liberal phrase stuck to this day, even though Democrats were calling themselves progressives back then. FDR is the only president to have ever served four consecutive terms. We had to change the rules after him. That time Coca-Cola messed up. We discussed how Coca-Cola's little marketing mishap parallels the GOP's problem with branding. Just like Coke, Republicans have been around for over a century. And just like Coke, we almost let someone's test ruin our brand. In Coke's case, they didn't have anyone to wrestle their name back from. They just went back to who they were, Coca-Cola Classic. In our case, we can't go back to the name we really are, liberals. It's too embedded in people's minds now that we're conservatives. So just keep this information filed in the back of your brain somewhere. Be sure you stick around for our next podcast, The Left's Global Assault on Freedom, because some of you think this is just a United States problem. Here's a quote I found online that's perfect for today's talk. Words are free. It's how you use them 
that may cost you. I'm Rob Lett, and I approve this message.